Hi friends! My name is Sarah Wilson and I am the Director of Education at the Autry Museum of the American West. I am very excited that you can join us on this lesson. Over the next 15 minutes we are going to explore the Ethnobotanical Garden at the Autry Museum. Let's get started! This is the Ethnobotanical Garden at the Autry Museum of the American West. The garden and the museum are located in Griffith Park, which is located in Los Angeles. This is the ancestral home of the Gabrielino Tongva, and we believe it is important to celebrate their continued presence on this land since time immemorial. We are going to explore California native plants on this lesson. We are using the definition of native plants as plants that grew here in California prior to the changes caused by European American colonization. California native plants are amazing. Their roots stabilize the soil, meaning the roots make the soil strong and safe, and protect it against erosion. Erosion is a process in which the soil is worn away by wind, water, or other natural activities. Plants release oxygen, which allow animals, including humans, to breathe. And they provide shade, shelter, and food for all kinds of life. Plants are also beautiful and come in a fantastic variety of shapes, sizes, colors, and smells. You will notice during this tour that we will bring up relationships between plants and animals, including humans. This is because California native plants have evolved with animals for thousands, if not millions, of years. Because they have evolved together, plants and animals have relationships that are important for their survival. Many plants cannot reproduce without the help of butterflies, bees, and other kinds of pollinators. Pollinators move pollen, which often looks like a fine powder, from one plant to another. This allows the plants to reproduce. The plants, in return, provide necessary food sources, such as nectar. California plants are also amazingly diverse. California has a wide range of environments that support this incredible diversity of plant life. California is home to more native plants than any other state in the nation. Nearly 6,500 plants are native to California. Let's go meet some of those plants. This is yarrow. Yarrow has beautiful clusters of white flowers that attract butterflies and insects. Yarrow grows throughout California and is an important medicinal plant for native California herbalists. Herbalists are people who work with medicinal plants. Yerba mansa grows throughout Southern California, as well as in a few select locations in the Central Valley and near San Francisco. The plant, which means calming herb in Spanish, goes dormant in the late summer and turns red in the fall. Dormant means that the plant becomes inactive, as if it's asleep. This is wild grape. Wild grape can be found growing throughout Central and Northern California, and occasionally in Southern California. The fruit are an important food source for humans and animals, and the flowers attract bees and butterflies. Native Californians use the astringent leaves to reduce the swelling caused by bee stings, mild snake bites, and insect bites. Because wild grape vines are flexible and strong, they are used to make baskets and tools for hunting and fishing. This is California redbud. California redbud, also known as western redbud, grows between 6 and 16 feet tall. Its flowers, which range from magenta to red to purple, bloom between February and April. It is an incredibly important basketry plant for native California weavers. At least 20 
different communities use redbud branches in basket weaving. This plant is called deer grass. Deer grass are important basketry plants for California basket weavers. The plant, which grows mostly along the coastal regions of Central and Southern California, are popular with bees and ladybugs. The bushy stalks of the plant also hide baby deer while their mothers are out looking for food. One way basket weavers tend this plant is to prune the stalks back to the plant's base. This is an oak tree. Oak trees, such as this coast live oak, are some of the most important plants in California. Much of California was once covered with groves of oak trees. There are 20 oak species native to California, and you will encounter a different species depending on which California landscape you visit. Acorns from oak trees have served as a dietary staple for native California communities since time immemorial. Oak trees are also an important source of food and shelter for birds, insects, and animals. This beautiful tree is an elderberry. Elderberries are small trees which can be found across California. Their creamy flowers attract butterflies and their blue colored berries are an incredibly important source of food for birds. These are woolly blue curls. Woolly blue curls are beautiful and fragrant plants that can be found growing within 50 miles of the California coastline from Monterey County to northern Baja, California. While hummingbirds are the chief pollinator of these plants, bees are also attracted to the plant's spiky blue flowers. As a fire follower, woolly blue curls require the intense heat of fire to grow and are often some of the first flowers to emerge following a fire. These are arroyo willows. They can be found across California, particularly in places with wetlands. Willows are an important plant in controlling soil erosion, and their yellowish flowers are pollinated by insects and birds. Willow bark contains salicin, which is used as a pain reliever and anti-inflammatory medicine, similar to aspirin. This is a Catalina cherry tree. These trees can be found throughout Southern California, primarily across the Channel Islands. Catalina cherry trees produce white flowers that attract butterflies and insects, as well as tart fruit, which are irresistible to birds, as well as delicious to humans. This is white sage. White sage is a keystone species both ecologically and culturally to the coast chaparral habitat of Southern California. A keystone species is an organism, like an animal or a plant, that has a huge effect on its environment. White sage supports hummingbirds, bees, and insects, and it is an incredibly important ceremonial and medicinal plant to California native communities. It is used for smoke purification, both by individuals at prayer and by whole communities in ceremony. We have talked a lot about how plants help us, but how can we help plants? We can help the native plants in our homes by tending them, pruning or cutting back branches and clearing away debris helps plants grow strong and healthy. We can expand and strengthen native plant habitats by planting more native plants. Visit your local garden center or nursery that offers local native plants and seeds, and don't be shy about asking their advice. 
garden center and nursery staff are very knowledgeable and can provide all kinds of information on how to get started. We can promote native plants by supporting the work of groups like California Native Plant Society, Theodore Payne Foundation, the National Audubon Society, and Hahamangna Nursery. To recap our exploration of the garden, we have learned about 11 different California native plants and why they are so important. Let's take a few minutes to recap what we have learned. You can do this with a partner or by writing your answers down on a piece of paper. We talked about how important native plants are. Do you remember some of the things that plants do for the environment? Please feel free to pause this video to discuss native plant importance with a partner or write down your answers on a piece of paper. We have talked about the diversity of California native plants. What kinds of diversity did you notice in our lesson? Flower color? Leaf shape? Size? Please feel free to pause this video to discuss the diversity you noticed with a partner or write down your answers on a piece of paper. Did you have a favorite plant on our tour? Which plant was it? Why was it your favorite? Please feel free to pause this video to discuss your favorite plant with a partner or write down your answers on a piece of paper. For a final activity, take a walk around your neighborhood. During your walk, find a new plant that you don't know. Sketch it or take a photo of it. When you return home, investigate that new plant. Find out its name. Determine if it is a native plant in your area. What does this plant do to help others? Does it provide food? Does it provide medicine? We hope you have enjoyed this lesson of our ethnobotanical garden. Please continue to visit the Autry Museum of the American West's distance learning site for more videos, lessons, and learning opportunities. Take care.